I'm Patrick from Tino Tokyo. Today I have a little breakdown for you from our newest EP Genetics. Uh, the track I show you is Data DNA. And on this tutorial, I show you some tips and tricks and what kind of effects I prefer in my productions. So let's get into it. So let's start with the tutorial. At first, I want to show you that on my master channel, I always have my master chain on. The reason is um, I like it when my tracks uh, sounds finished. Um, yeah, that's my kind of workflow. And I also have um, the utility on mono. So I uh, hear it exactly how the tracks are sounds on a club sound system. Yeah, that's it. So let us start with the drums. I group them. Uh, on the group I always have a little bit of saturation just for more perceived loudness. The EQ to cut out uh, the 30 hertz because nobody needed on the drums. And a little bit of a clue compression to glue the sounds together. So here at first I have just a side chain signal. It's an audio clip, small one. But let us start with the first kick. Um, when I work with my kicks, I like to use the drum rack because you have different sounds on it and you can switch it really fast if you don't like the kick that you used at first. I used this one. Um, and I always have, um, I split the kick in two signals. There is the sub signal. I use the multiband dynamics and give it a little bit more dB on the lows. Then I compress the whole signal. Then I cut the highs to have uh, some sounds in the lows. And I also give that sound, um, um, use it as mono sound, cut the kick always in the middle. And on the other one, for the highs in the mid, I have an OTT, standard. Um, not the full amount. Uh, also, I use the saturation um, for more frequency in the mids and in the high frequency. Then I cut out with an EQ the sounds you see here at the lows on 54 hertz. A little bit of boost in the mids. After that, I use the drum bus for more transients. A lot transients and at the end I like it a lot to use the clue compression with a small ratio a release from uh, 1.2 and a tag from 3 to give uh, the whole sound a little bit more attack and more transient I will show you how it sounds uh, with the effects and without at first without And now I switch it on. Yeah, it sounds much bigger. The next one is a layer kick sound. It's just an audio clip here, audio sample. I don't use a drum rig. Um, I also use uh, the utility on every sample before and put the gain on minus 10 because uh, the most of the samples are uh, really loud and so you have not the you cannot use so much effects on it and so take the gain minus 10 dB and you have the chance to make a little bit sound design and use the effects at first the OTT after that the saturation for more frequencies um, the drum bus for the transient sound, and here you see the cueing yeah. on the lows on 95.8 Hz, and also in the mids on 726 Hz boost them. 
and the glue compression for more transient and attack. Um, just have a listen to that kick sound. Yeah, it's more room, more space. Um, I show you how it sounds without all the effects. And now I'll switch it on. Yeah, much bigger. The next sounds are more, it's not a typical kick sound, it's more an um, electronic sound. Just have a listen. Yeah, sounds like kind of toms, electric toms, whatever. Um, yeah, the same on the other sounds, utility, OTT, standard, nothing special. Always the saturation, boost up the sound a little bit, crank them up on the bass that had a little bit more gain and more crunchy. Also the drum bus for the transients and here's some EQs and some frequencies that I like to push them up. And um, an absolutely game changer for me is the Soothy 2, a really good plugin where you can cut out frequencies that you don't like in your mix. And at the end of the chain, the glue compressor again. So on the next, there is, I think there's a different electronic kick part or kick sound. Just have a listen. Yeah. Um, it sounds not typical like a kick, but it fits really well in the drum group. So that's the reason why I have it here inside. Nothing, nothing uh, special on the on the FX channel. Same as on the other kick sounds. You see, sometimes the the EQ, the frequencies, I I boost them or not. Uh, sometimes a little bit different, but not really special. Um, just a little listen to this one. Yeah, this sound is from a really big sample loop and that's um, the most of the things I do when I work with samples. I listen to big loops, different sounds, pitch them up and down, um, don't use the warp because the sounds um, I lost their texture when you start to use warp and complex. So sometimes, sometimes it's much better to do nothing with the warp or complex on the complex side. Just use the pitch. So you get really nice results for that sound. This is another group, but there I did a little bit more just to listen to this. Mm. Just do it again. Yeah, really nice sound, though they're a little bit different to the other groups. The utility, OTT, standard, also the saturation for more texture and more frequency. And uh, this effects I really like, and I use it a lot. It's the shifter. It gives you um, that stereo spread wide sound. So just have a listen with the plug in and without. Yeah, you hear there are stereo effect and so we get minus 12 uh, semitones and give you a nice texture in it. Sounds really good. Also drum bus for the transients, the EQ and at the end the glue compression. So that's um, that's the kick sounds. Let us uh, see what we have on the snare and or what kind of snare we have. So for the snare sound I used not a typical snare, I used a rim click. Just have a listen.
nothing nothing special i uh, pitch it up like uh, six semitones normally q cut out the low cuts uh, the low frequencies and um, the glue compression for more transient and attack on the return channel i have a reverb it's the wooden room but i um, always use a, a compression and eq to give uh, the reverb or what kind of effects you use a little bit more uh, brilliance on on the high frequency so just have a listen with the compressor compression and the eq and without Yeah, much better with the compressor and the EQ. It's a uh, it's bigger, bigger reverb. Um, the next is oh, just a drum break for the intro, just have a listen. Nothing special on it, just the utility EQ and the glue compression. Then we have the shaker. Yeah, pretty nice sound. Um, saturation EQ where I cut lots of the the low end because you don't need it, so you have much more space for the rest of the drum sounds. Also the glue compression for more transient and attack, and a little bit of side chain. The signal comes from the kick directly, um, but not not so hard compression, just a little bit so the the highs from the kicks have enough space between the shaker. Then we have a hi-hat sound. Yeah. Same EQing as um, like the shaker, nothing special. Then we have some percussion sounds. I just, just have a listen to this one. Yeah, it's just a small piece. You see, from a bigger loop, sometimes I just use one or two pieces, just one or two hits, nothing more. On the next, uh, I have some stick sounds. Just have a listen to this one. Yeah, nice one. Yeah, there are nothing special on the EQ because uh, sometimes uh, the samples are produced so good and sound so so good you don't have to uh, change so many things then there we have some little snare fills on it yeah really nice um, also a low cut on 190 hertz and on the intro there are a percussion loop yeah really nice sound OTT on it saturation EQing nothing special and the glue compression and the last sound in the drum group are some high rim clicks. Oh. Sounds like a machine gun. So there, same, same. Saturation, EQing and glue compression. The drum group together sounds like this. So yeah, that's the first for the drum group. 
Let's go to the subgroup. So, uh, on this group I have four, one, two, three, four, five, six different sub sounds. And I also have my uh, main sample evoke on this group. Um, there's no reason why, it's just that I have on the group a little bit of saturation and cut out some frequencies to have more space for the kick and the snare or the rim sound. So just have a listen to the first sub bass sound. Yeah, I'll show you what I'm doing here. Also the utility on on every channel. And I have here my uh, bass split. I use this on the kick as well. But I always use it on every sub bass sound because uh, when you split it, you have more the chance to um, create some new sounds on the sound. So on the low, the multiband compression, push up a little bit the lows. Uh, uh, compress the whole signal, cut out the highs, a little boost for the lows. Um, also do it in mono. Um, a glue compression, but more like a limiter. I prefer more the glue compression than um, the limiter, it sounds much better. And at the end of the group I have a side chain. The signal came from the side kick, so there's uh, enough space for the kick. Uh, and the other one, the OTT, then I also like the amp to give it, make it more, uh, a little kind of distortion. I can show you with and without the amp. Yeah, it sounds like that it have a little bit of compression in it. Uh, the next one is really nice. I like um, this effects a lot. Uh, it's a, the bright snare preset. Uh, it gives um, the sound a little bit of more more highs. You see here the dry wet knob is not there's not so much in it. Then the shifter again, just for the stereo spread, and because it sounds really nice on the mid bass sounds. Then a little bit of a phaser, flanger, doubler sound to give more stereo spread. Um, then I have um, a reverb on it, just a little bit direct on the sound. I don't um, like it to use it on a return channel. Um, it sounds much better when you have it directed on the bass sound. After that, saturation to give more texture and more frequency in the mid and the, and the high. An erosion to get more texture. After that, an OTT again, but not, not full. And then the EQing. I like it to have the bass um, between 300 and 800 hertz um, to push them a little bit more because it sounds much better in the mix. And at the end of the chain there is a side chain compressor so let's switch to the next sub bass sound i will show you so yeah most of um, the effects are the same i just changed um, the frequency and the amount of the erosion and also on the amp I give the sound a little bit more of gain as on the other sub so that's it so let's uh, have a listen to the next sub sound oh yeah Um, that's the intro sub sound. There is no sub on it, so I switched it off. So I just have um, the mid and the high frequency on.
that because it's uh, the build up for the second drop also the same you see the ott the amp the bright snare again the shifter double thick not so much are changing on this one sometimes a little bit of play with the reverb to give it a little bit more wet um, also i change uh, the erosion um, but nothing more maybe on the eq cut out a little bit more of the highs but that's it nothing nothing special so let us listen to this bass sound yeah so the same on the low we have the same as on the other sub bass sounds and here i have two two amps again um, um the gain is here not so high on it and after the ott i have an amp again with the heavy sound also the bright snare i changed something here on the shifter i used not the pitch i used the ring mod um it gives a nice texture and I just have a listen without and with Yeah, sounds really dope. Um, also the doubler, the reverb, saturation, the erosion. After that, the OTT again, um, the queuing, and for the stator wobbling sound, I use the auto pan. You see it here. I can show you with out and with. Yep, and also a sidechain compressor. And the last sub sound, just have a listen. Yeah, the same as the first sound. Um, the difference is here, I just have uh, other sound on the amp. I don't use the heavy, I use the boost. So that's the reason why it sounds different to the other. Yeah, that's that's for the sub and bass sounds. So I show you the main vocal sound that I use on that track. So just just have a listen to the to the main vocal sound. <laughs> Yeah, so you see here, it's a loop, a big one, and I just cut out the three words or whatever. Um, on this sample, I used the Complex Pro and uh, pitch up uh, the sound on minus six semitones. And on the group, I always have the OTT, an amp on it, but not so much on the treble cause. The frequency in the highs are too sharp. Then I use the loop uh, metal needle. It gives some more, hmm, what can I say, kind of room sound. Just have a listen with and without. Yeah, there's not so big different, but um, but I like the, this one. Also, the big snare for more texture and the high frequency the shifter for the uh, stereo spread and there is a a reverb group a face show that on a tutorial there are two different um, reverb sounds and you can use the dry wet to um, give a little bit of this sound inside your sample Sounds pretty good. Also an OTT and the EQing and the Suthi 2 because um, uh, on, on vocal samples there are a lot of frequencies that you don't want to have in your mix so use it. It's really helpful. After that a little bit of um, the compression 
as a limiter and also to give um, to make the sound a little bit louder and a nice side chain not too heavy from the kick so the next one Yeah, okay, that's um, the same vocal, but for the build up, I think there's, um, yeah, same effects chain on the main vocal. The only difference between is that I have a auto pan on it, the build ups, and also an auto filter to have that effect that the vocals come slowly inside. The next sound. Yeah, that's the other vocal sample. You see it again from a long loop, cut out some sounds, play with the pitch, play with the complex pro warp effects and on the effects chain just after the OTT also the loop metal needle again and the bright snare uh, here I have the doubler and also that face reverb technique you see two different reverb sounds and you have the opportunity to change a lot of sounds here if you want to have a different sound so it's really nice follow him on uh, patreon you have really good tutorials really helpful um, also an ott eqing i cut a lot out of there too much highs in it after that the cc2 and the glue compression as a limiter so and the next one Yeah, the same vocal sound we have before, but I cut a lot of pieces out in it. I use it more uh, as a percussion. Um, you see the same OTT, an amp for a little bit of distortion, the loop needle, bright snare. Here I have the shifter for the stereo effect. Uh, also the doubler, the face reverb technique, OTT. Also an EQing, cut off some frequency that I don't like. Always in the in the high frequency that's uh, around 1,940 uh, kilo, 1.94 kilohertz. After that, the Soothe 2 and the glue compression. Yeah, so that's that's it for the sub sound and vocal sounds. And at the end of the day, the FX sounds. Um, at first on my FX group, I have always an EQing, cut out the lows and a frequency of where the, the rim click or the snare sound have a more space. So I like to cut out these frequencies. So I don't always use a side chain for the snare sounds. I think it's sometimes it's much better to cut out these frequencies so the snare have enough space in the mix. At first uh, we have... Yeah, just a scream sound. Um, nothing special on it. OTT saturation, uh, the delay for um, for that stereo effect, uh, also the shifter and the EQ cut out a lot of the mid and the lows. Um, yeah, that's it. I don't know why I have the auto filter. Maybe I want to try it as an, to build up something, but yeah, don't need. And no side chain on it because uh, you don't need it on these small pieces of, of sounds. So the next one.
Oh, some kind of jungle or something like that. Bit. OTT, saturation, shifter, compression, CO2 and glue compression. Nothing special. Oh yeah, and there we have, uh, it's like a vocal, oh, just have a listen. Yeah, it works um, pretty well on the on the whole sound. Just have a listen. Yeah, it pushed the second drop a little bit forward, and they're always the same. An OTT saturation, and here I cut out a frequency. They are more really aggressive. Um, glue compression on it like a limiter and make the sound a little bit louder and better in the mix and after that soothy too and a side chain on the sound because there are so many sounds on this part so it's better to use a side chain that the kick have enough space and there have some riser um on the groups they're nothing special just on no tt uh, the face reverb group EQing, uh, sometimes an auto filter to build up like this. Just have a listen on it. Yeah, a glue compressor, Silky 2, that's it. Here are some, some riser sounds. And on this one, just have a look. There's something special in it. Yeah, have an auto pen. Cause, um, yeah, it gives more rhythm at the build up. Just have a listen with and without. Yeah. Works really good for me. And the last one. Yeah, just an impact sound. Um, I used to echo on it to give uh, the whole sound more space. And after that also the reverb. That's the uh, re uh, reverb group from Face. EQing, Compression, and Soothy 2. So yeah, that's it. Um, I hope there are some tips and tricks that are helpful for you, for your production. Um, yeah, thanks for watching and I see you.